All right, so in this video we're checking out a new all-in-one flight controller from Hack RC. This is uh, the F7226. So it's an F722 based all-in-one flight controller. So it's got uh, basically a single board, whoop style, or whoop size board, um, with a built-in flight controller plus a 4-in-1 ESC. So the ESC part is 40 amps bursting at 50 amps. And the uh, ESCs are PLLES or 8 bit ESCs, they're not the 32 bit kind. And um, this is what the other side of the board looks like. So, this is an F722 chip, and you can see that right here. It's got a MPU 6000 gyro, standard Betaflight OSD chip, 5 volt, 3 amp voltage regulator. It does have a uh, port here with a plug. That you can plug in here and this will go to a DJI air unit. Um, this is a standard, pretty much standard typical DJI air unit plug or you can cut that plug off and solder it to a Vista. Uh, but it is battery voltage to the Vista or the air unit so if you're using an air unit, you, I think air units only go to 4S, this board can go up to 6S. So something to keep in mind, you want to be uh, not plugging this in if, into a 6S battery if you have this plugged into a air unit. This also comes with an XT30 connector, a 270 microfarad 35 volt capacitor. Get your standard set of rubber grommets and you can see here on um, the holes are kind of longer so they will fit either 25 millimeter or the 25 and a half millimeter mounting holes. And then you do have this um, USB-C extension cable and it comes on a plug with these, looks like it's uh, seven wires and the other sides are not soldered on. The USB port that's on here is a micro USB port and there's also some documentation on a wiring diagram, how to put everything together, however, there is no documentation here on how to wire up the USB-C port extender. That's what that is. So the whole idea of this uh, USB-C extender is you solder this to the flight controller and you put this somewhere else on the quad where it's more accessible because a lot of times in a lot of frames these all-in-one boards are in spots where the USB port's hard to reach and you have to use, use, use a right-angled cable or some sort of adapter. Um, but it's not entirely clear where to solder that. I mean, it does look like there's three pads here on the under, underside, and it says USB here, um, but it's not entirely clear how to solder that up. Because I think that you know, it says minus here, plus here, but then these three pads aren't labeled, and it's not in the wiring diagram. So that's a, um, a bit of a misstep on their part. I think they should have documented that correctly. Now, in terms of um, this board, is it a bit on the expensive side? I think it's around seventy-five dollars, and that's kind of the case with these newer all-in-one boards that are coming out with the F722. It's a more expensive chip. The uh, uh, less expensive F405 chip that also has like five or six U-Warts, like the F7 chip, is cheaper. But because of the chip shortage, um, those are very hard to find. So you're not seeing any new boards coming out with those chips anymore. So the only ones that um, these all-in-one boards come with are either the very, uh, uh, well, less capable F411 chip, which only has two yards and maybe you can add a soft serial, or you have this option of the more, much more expensive F7 chip with, I think, five or six yards. And of course, you know, you have more pads to accommodate those extra yards. I don't think all the yards are, are broken out, but um, there are a, a, at least a few of them here. It is with R1, R3, UR3. I think one of the URTs is on this plug here. And looks like there's uh, one more here, UR2, on this side over here. So, yeah, I think uh, four of the five are actually broken out, um, and one of them isn't. But in terms of the board itself, you know, it's eight layered PCB, pretty, you know, typical stuff here of in terms of like what boards look like these days I and mean, it's it's nice nothing uh amazing or anything like that uh, you know pretty typical stuff here 
in terms of the FETs. You know, by looking at them, you can't really tell a whole lot. Now I see we have a black box data chip here as well. Looks like a current sensor there. The motor wire connectors are, the, the they're kind of on the small side. Usually on the nicer boards, these will be sticking out a little bit more and they'll be a little bit bigger. Uh, but these are, you have the ability to solder to the side of the board here for these wires. So that's why they're, when you have that ability, those are usually smaller, but that, you know, it makes the board smaller and has a little bit less weight if that matters to you. And then uh, one more thing is the board does have a barometer if you are looking to measure your altitude. And I think that's about it in terms of covering this board. You know, um, I've got, I get a lot of these sort of flight controllers and these days a lot of these are coming with uh, F7s instead of F4s. So you basically, as I said, you either come with a very high-end F7 chip or the low-end F411 chip. Um, I was thinking about doing like sort of a roundup video with a bunch of other boards I, I haven't even made a video about, but maybe if you got questions about like what uh, you should be looking for in a flight controller board or an all-in-one flight controller board, which ones you should use this for. So for example, something like this in the uh, 40 amp range, you know, probably looking at like maybe a lightish five inch is probably the most I would put this in. And anything, you know, smaller, of course, you can go all the way down to a 2S uh, tiny whip, really, pretty much uh, this will work in that. But this is, you know, with an F7 chip, and all that's kind of overkill. It's a little bit on the heavier side for this uh, size of board. And there's a lot of other options out there in the market. So I know there's a lot of confusion out there on what to choose and what would be good for your needs. So yeah, leave me some questions about like what kinds of uh, setups you're looking to put uh, flight controllers and flight stacks and all-in-one flight controller boards into and um, in a future video I'm going to probably bring a whole bunch of boards out that I have made videos for and answer some of those questions and give you some examples of like what uh, I think at least uh, you should be using or what kind of applications you could be using some of those boards for so give me your questions down in the comment section about uh, what you are planning to build and what you think you might want to go for and maybe I'll um, gather up some of those questions and put them in a future video and sort of give you some advice as to what kinds of things you might want to go for in terms of the parts. Because these days um, they're getting more expensive and it's going to be harder to pick and choose which ones are going to be bright for you. So I'm going to try and help you guys out with that. So leave those questions down in the comment section. Okay, that's going to do it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll talk to you guys in the next one.